Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video on my channel here. Let's just see if you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe so that you guys are updated on my second hair transplant journey progress, as well as video topics covering current hair loss treatments. If you guys are also losing hair, make sure to visit my website at hairlicious.com to purchase your microneedling devices, which are scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth, my DH debugging shampoo and serum, vitamin supplements, laser therapy caps, and a few other products for those who are suffering from hair loss. Also, if you guys are looking for a good hair transplant clinic, take a look at Motion Clinic in South Korea. This is where I went to get my two FUE procedures uh, done. And um, in a little bit, I will show you guys my one year mark after my second hair transplant. So as you guys can see, I do have a bandana over my head. I did get a third hair transplant in South Korea this past week. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys. Um, so today's video is going to be special because it actually marks my one year mark since my second FUE procedure at Motion Clinic where I got a little over 1800 grafts implanted into the frontal portion of the hairline. Now the reason why I am wearing this bandana here is so that I can actually uh, better show you guys the grafts and the hairline. Uh, so without further ado, let me go ahead and show you guys the final results. The one year post-op results uh, without light and then I'm going to uh, turn on some harsh lighting so you guys can kind of see the density as well as all the singles and doubles and triple graphs. But, you know, from a distance here, this is how the hairline looks. It's a pretty solid hairline, as you guys can tell. It's a uh, almost a normal zero, I want to say. Pretty straight. It boxes in. Um, I did get some of the temporal points uh, implanted as well because before it would be a little bit more elevated. And I did add in some density here so you guys can kind of see how um, that little sharp point right there, which adds in a masculine feature shown. Same thing on the other side here. And if you move up to the frontal portion of the hairline, you guys are obviously going to see that it is pretty dense. There are a bunch of singles in the front reinforced by multigraphs into the back. So, I mean, I'm very satisfied with how the results came out to be. Now, let me go ahead and turn on this light here. So the light that I'm about to turn on is pretty harsh. It's actually uh, some LED lights that you would normally put on your garage. But as you guys can see, it's, it's pretty bright. Um, so this is pretty, uh, pretty much like the worst lighting that you guys can actually expose your hairline to. A lot of people that you guys see on YouTube or even on you know, uh, hair transplant websites are not gonna be under such harsh light because it's gonna show right through their scalps. But the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can show you guys how densely packed my grafts are. So uh, the centimeters per squared um, is about 50 to 55 centimeters per squared as far as the grafts are concerned, or 55 grafts per centimeter squared. And so if you guys take a look in the front, it's just a impeccable hairline. You can totally see all of the singles, which is exactly what you want when it comes to creating a very natural and soft looking hairline. And this temple here is just perfectly just closed off. Now, like I said, it is a little bit more of an aggressive type of hairline, but given the hair loss that I had, I, had, I was somewhere between a normal two, two and a half. And so I didn't really experience that much of a hair loss early on. And since I did hop on finasteride as soon as I uh, was done with my first hair transplant, I was actually able to retain all of the hairs that I have right now. I don't have any signs of crown recession. There's no other forms of hair loss other than the uh, retrograde alopecia that I still have on the sides. Um, it's kind of difficult to treat retrograde alopecia because I really haven't seen any cases where people were able to grow back a lot of the hairs. But the good thing is that retrograde alopecia is a, a more slow type of hair loss where the hairs typically just get thin. It doesn't really fall off. Uh, so what I do is I just try to keep the hairs on the sides really short. But as you guys can see, man, I'm, I'm pretty much done, guys. This is my one year results and I'm pretty satisfied with how everything came out to be. Um, and you know, some might, some might say that, oh, you know, hair licious-y or Aaron, you know, you didn't really have a severe form of hair loss. That's the case, but I mean, when you're suffering from hair loss, I think everyone goes through the same troubles, the same anxiety, uh, the same concerns that, you know, just anybody who is losing hair is experiencing. So um, I don't think that is a valid concern. I think anybody who is losing hair should be proactive to do whatever it takes to keep the hairs that they have. And in my case, you know, I decided to proceed with a hair transplant. I'm not saying that a hair transplant would be um, 
a right or wrong type of decision. It's pretty much up to your personal um, decision. Also, depending on what type of severity of hair loss that you have, if you guys are even gonna be a good candidate to um, you know, be able to get a hair transplant. Uh, in my case, I was actually lucky to be able to get two hair transplants. Um, and I still have a lot of density left. And also in the back of the scalp, I do still have, I wanna say at least a few thousand grafts where I can still implant. Later on the road for a third hair transplant. Um, at this point, I don't have any plans to get a third hair transplant. Um, honestly, I don't really even look forward to getting <laughs> another hair transplant just because of all the hassle, um, you know, the whole waiting game, I think that's the worst thing when it comes to getting a hair transplant, you have to wait anywhere from eight months to 12 months plus to see the final results. Um, I am a fast grower, so I was actually able to see most of the growth around my eight to nine month mark. But, you know, pretty satisfied with everything. I love the hairline design. And I'm just so happy that I just decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and get a hair transplant. I know that some of you guys have been waiting for better treatment. Um, you know, I always like to tell them that nothing is ever promised when it comes to stem cell replication or other drugs that are in the, you know, the pipelines. There's no cure right now. And the best thing that you guys can do right now is to get on FDA approved hair loss medications, or you can try something that's um, off label like RU58841, where a lot of people seem to have had some pretty good results. In my case, I am still taking finasteride. I am still taking uh, minoxidil, microneedling, laser therapy, uh, I'm using my DHT blocker shampoo and so far everything has been pretty good. So up close, everything looks really good. Now, if you guys are interested in getting a hair transplant at Motion Clinic, uh, they still do have the whole 14 day quarantine period where you have to stay at a government facility or if you guys have family that's living there, you got to stay with them for 14 days before you proceed getting a um, you know, moving forward with the hair transplant. Now everything's gonna be at your expense. So the whole 14 days, I don't know exactly how much hotels and lodging and food and everything that would cost, but I would assume that it's going to, um, you know, at least be a thousand dollars, assuming that it's maybe $50, $60 per night. And there's on top of that, there's food. I don't know if they provide it to you, uh, but you can still go to South Korea get a hair transplant. Um, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna have all of, you know, their contact information, but overall, man, I'm pretty satisfied, very happy. A lot of you guys have been saying that, you know, my results are one of the best that they've actually seen. And I like to think so, even I might be biased because this is my hair transplant. But looking at some of the other YouTubers results, uh, people that went to you know, Mexico or Turkey that got their hair transplants, um, I don't think it's as good as the level that I got here. Now, I did get two hair transplants, um, in case you guys were wondering. The first one was also at Motion Clinic, and I actually had some uh, buddies of mine who actually went there. And it was kind of like unexpected when I went to Korea. I just uh, wasn't even planning on getting a, a hair transplant. But, um, you know, I've always wanted to do something about my hair, and I felt that it was the right time and the right opportunity. And so I got around 1,700 grafts for my first procedure into the hairline. Um, I didn't really like the hairline too much because it was kind of a little bit more recessed to my taste. And also the doctor back then when he did the first hair transplant, um, he also kind of implanted multi-grafts into the frontal portion of the hairline, which should not be the case. Um, and so it kind of made the hairline unnatural, but luckily I went back to Motion Clinic for a second time after consulting with their head doctor, Dr. Bach. Um, he's the one that heads Motion Clinic. He has uh, a lot of experience when it comes to hair transplantation. He, I think he also has a facility out in Japan. So um, he is an older guy, uh, probably around his, I don't know, mid 60s, early 70s. But he's the one that did my hair transplant. And I'm just so happy that he was able to, uh, I, did, I guess, rectify the hairline, make it look more natural, reinforce it with the single grafts. And, you know, I'm just so happy with how everything came out. So um, I'm very thankful and there's a lot of things that I don't have to worry about anymore. I know that when you guys are losing hair, um, in my case, I was worried about, you know, going swimming, exposing my hairline when it's wet, you know, putting down the window uh, while I'm driving and having the wind blow against my hair and exposing the hairline. When I was dating my, uh, my then uh, girlfriend, who she's now my wife, um, Angie, she actually mentioned about my hairline and I think that's kind of what 
triggered the ball to go ahead and get a hair transplant. Um, but you know, it turned out to be um, a good experience, something that I'm very happy that I did. And hopefully people that are also in my shoes, people that are losing hair, um, can also get the opportunity to get a hair transplant if they're a good candidate. Um, and you know, there's nothing wrong about shaving your head if you're balding. Uh, it's up to your personal, you know, personal taste, personal beliefs, whatever it is. If you guys feel like you guys need to shave your head and just stop worrying about hair loss, I think that's the, you know, that's the route that you guys choose. Now, I will say that a lot of people that I've seen on YouTube um, that end up going the, the shaved route, they would still be good candidates. Um, I've, I've seen people who are like Nord 3s and they're like, oh my God, you know, I'm suffering from hair loss. There's nothing I can do. Only thing I can do is just go and shave it off. Um, I think there are some people still who are very good candidates when it comes to hair transplantation and they just don't know about it and or they just don't have, uh, I guess, anyone to go and talk to about it. So um, hair transplantation, I think for, for most people, if you are you know, anywhere from Nord 5, Nord 6 and, and lower uh, would be a good candidate, assuming that you have good density, good hair characteristics. Um, and also, more importantly, you guys need to be on medication um, after a hair transplant. Just because you guys had a hair transplant where you remove the hairs from the back of the scalp, which are typically resistant to DHT and you implant it into balding areas, um, are not going to fall out for the most part. They might, you know, end up getting thinner and thinner and miniaturized over time, uh, but you guys still have to be proactive, worry about the hairs that are your native hairs, hairs that have not been transplanted, hairs that are already still there, behind the transplanted areas that are still gonna be prone to DHT and miniaturization. So you guys still need to be proactive by taking hair loss medications such as finasteride, dutasteride, uh, minoxidil, other types of uh, you know secondary therapy to make sure that you guys either slow down or you know just stop uh, for the hair loss. Uh, but in my case, you know, pretty happy. And I'm just uh, very glad to be able to share this journey with you guys. And I guess this pretty much marks the last journey of my second hair transplant. Uh, like I said, hopefully I don't have to get a third hair transplant. Um, but you know, thing thing with hair loss is that it's always progressive and not even uh, medications such as finasteride is going to be effective for people um, where it was effective for, let's say, the first five years. Uh, and five years later, you guys might still see a progression of hair loss. So um, it's one of those things where it's, it's a hit or miss. And, you know, most of the hair loss that you guys do see is androgenic alopecia. So it is genetically, um, if you guys are genetically going to lose hair, you guys are going to, unless you guys do something to prevent it. And I think prevention is the number one key. Um, you guys shouldn't jump into a hair transplant in the first place. You guys should try different types of treatments to see um, how well you re uh, respond to, to these different types of treatments. But overall, um, in my case, um, pretty happy. And um, maybe I'll give you guys another update, maybe around uh, month 15 or something like that, or a year and a half. But this is pretty much the end of my journey. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave us in comments. Make sure to reach out. If you guys have any questions as far as hair transportation, uh, doctors, or any methods, let me know. I also have an ebook, uh, 25 Top Hair Transplant Doctors in the World. You guys can check out my website at hairlicious.com. Um, I did a lot of research and looking at various photos, going through forums, and uh, a lot of uh, hours that were spent into uh, coming up with that ebook. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to check that out. But that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm gonna have more content on hair loss, more celebrity type of hair loss, hair transplants before and after and any up, um, upcoming, I guess, uh, treatments that are currently in the pipelines. So please stay tuned and thanks for watching guys. Take care.